Last week, I asked you what you wanted to see more of. Recon, methodology, labs, all of the above. And it turns out, all of you wanted to see all of the above. So I went and I started hunting through all of our free labs on Hacking Hub. And I did find a lab that I've never covered. It's the one about Orwa and HX007, connecting a few tiny findings and turning them into a massive payday of $40,000 in bug bounties. It's a perfect recon example. So today I'm going to do the full walkthrough, the thought process, the tools, and the exact chain they use to score this massive payday. So let's fire up our Kaido and jump into it. So to get started, all you have to do is go to hackingup.io, look for path to RCE, and it's going to bring up this module for you that you can click on, view hub, and all you have to do is launch. And of course, if you want to read their walkthrough right here, you can read it and see the whole thing and follow along as well. Well, but I'm going to show you exactly how they did it. And once we have it ready, we're going to click on open tab. And what's going to happen is just going to give us a 404. So let's just go ahead and quickly uh, open up our proxy. I'm going to open up Kaido, go into our scopes, and we're going to set a new scope of everything for this subdomain. So I'm going to actually make it EU2 just to be safe. And we're just going to do start at EU2, and we'll call this the $40,000 bounty. We're going to create this scope. I'm going to go intercept, set our scope, so it will only intercept that. And now that we have it, if we refresh, we can see that we have gotten this to work. So now we can refresh this page. And what we want to do quickly is launch our terminal. And within our terminal, we're going to draw FF and we're going to grab our URL and we're going to put our URL there and start with fuzzing. And this is going to do a little bit of content discovery and it's going to tell us what paths, what folders, or even what endpoints exist within this and it's doing something weird for some reason i'm just gonna uh do this maybe let me try it one more time so we can there we go now it looks better we can see the results there's an admin there's js there's more admin there's a web inf and it looks like it's just gonna keep on going while we wait for this i'm gonna quickly go into and look at admin let me disable this so we can do this there we go looks like there's an admin panel of some sort what i do here is try a couple of passwords like admin admin maybe admin password and a couple of easy ones. In this case, it's not going to work, but what we know is there's a folder here called admin. We have JS, CSS, and webmaster that is 403. So when you see admin being actually redirecting to a couple of extra paths, the thing to do here, the right approach is to just brute force for all of the different folders. You can also do that with just doing, I think, recursion. Let's try it as a recursive maybe. But what it does with uh, this tab right here is it's going to start adding a new job to the queue every time it founds it finds a folder so it found css it's going to add it it's going to fuzz that next js and then so on so i'm going to quickly go into admin here and we're going to do the same thing and we want to just see if it finds anything under admin and if it does can you find more content and it looks like there's another web inf which is kind of bizarre to see that in the admin folder but maybe it's some weird proxying that's being happened but we're going to let this go and see what we find give me a couple more stuff that it's going to find maybe i don't have all the words in here in my word list that is also very doable but let's see what else it finds and looking at this it looks like we are not getting exactly what we want and it's not finding the template or the endpoint that i need it to so there's a couple of things that's wrong and this is why we don't run ff on its own and what we want to do here instead is we want to look for matchers and to do that you have to do a matcher for let's see how it is right here the mc you want to say hey i want to look for a specific uh endpoints so i want to say anything that's valid maybe a 200 or 201 in case something is getting created we can do anything in the 300 range all the way to 307 and this is where most people get it wrong and that is by skipping two uh really crucial things so one is we want to look at 400s Maybe you want to look at 405, 415s, 403s, and 401s. The 401 is going to be the one that we probably don't need, but I want to make sure we're not missing this because if we go up here, there's a couple of 400s, but uh, we don't have 400, which I'll show you what that is in just a sec. So I'm going to rerun this again and let it look for all the other endpoints that we've missed. And hopefully we, by doing this, we're going to find exactly what we need. And now we can see that we found this download endpoint that we originally missed when we ran Fuff by itself. So I'm going to just grab this and I want to show you what this looks like if I do a curl and send it to admin like this. Whoops, let's do it one more time. Curl, and we're going to grab our URL. And instead of fuzz, I'm going to put download. And using the dash I with the capital I, it's going to give us all the headers there. Uh, let's see, looks like it's, let me see what we did wrong. There we go. I think something was wrong with my misspelling of something here. But if we look at this now, we can see that uh, it's coming back as a 400 
a bad request, right? It's saying bad request, something is missing. And typically when you do a bad request like that, it could be that it's expecting something in the body or the um, path right here, maybe something like a uh, path or maybe file. Let's just see what this drive path maybe uh, or file. I'm just guessing it's also a better way to do this. It looks like none of these work. So what we want to do next is we want to do the same thing. We're going to go back to F5. And instead of doing recursion, I'm going to just take this out. And we're going to remove the 400 and leave it as this is. And now we're going to do a download. But now we want to fuzz for the parameters. And I'm going to do something like test like this. So if I do this, it's going to look for all the different params. And if you don't have a parameter finder, I'm going to just quickly download one right here. I'm going to go to raw. Uh, we're going to just grab this, put it in our files right here. And all I'm going to do is just grab this and do an F -fuff, and then give it parameters.txt and the same thing that we were looking for earlier. And hopefully this one finds a valid parameter for us that we can test. So our thing here is that we found an endpoint and this endpoint exists. We just don't know fully how it works just yet. So it turns out, again, we ran fuzz or we ran on FFUF and we didn't find anything. And that's because we're assuming that it's going to come back as one of these. This is one of the things that you need to kind of fine tune when you come down to FFUF or fuzzing. One of my rule of thumb with fuzzing is actually just giving it everything and matching all of it. So I'm going to just do maybe 200 to 500 like this. And when it comes back and it's, you know, 400 is the one that we don't want, we can just do an FS or FC so we don't actually match for 400. And if there was one for 404, we'll also include that as well. But there's nothing coming back for 404. It's all the 400. So maybe we don't, you know, we don't, we don't match for 400. And we let this run now. Because what we're doing here is we're assuming that it's going to come back with the behavior that we expect, right? We know that this endpoint exists. We just have to find the anomaly in it to find exactly how it works. And the reason why we may get something other than the 400 is because maybe it's looking for a file. And if that file doesn't exist, it's going to come back with a 404 when we once we found that parameter, it looks like we did find it. So file name, once it is a valid parameter, it's looking for a file. But if the file doesn't exist, it is going to give us a 404. And that's kind of why I've switched this to here. A lot of times what you would see me do in my recon is, let's say I'm going to just cancel this really quickly and do another FFUF. If you are doing something like this, I would do a match all of like 200 to 500. And once the 404 comes out and you can see the size of it is 149 i'll do something like hey exclude the size 139 so now anything that is you know coming back and it's valid for me it's going to come back and show it to me and there's 400 maybe it will just uh exclude 400 and so on so you want to kind of fine tune your searches to make sure you're not missing anything it's really really common when you hack an api to get a 404 because even with some apis when you find the api v2 route even though it is a valid route it's going to come back as a 404 with a json header so you're going to miss that if you're not looking at these 404s all these little small behaviors that you may miss if you're just running ff like this uh just like i was earlier without any matches and uh doing you know something like this so just keep that in mind you want to make sure you observe some of these behaviors filter out and just look for all the different cases that this thing is going to return to you so now that we have that we're going to go to download and we have file name equals test and this comes back and says, hey, 404, no files found. And uh, we need to find a valid file here. So if we go to admin, I'm going to open it up and see if there's any files right here that we can find to maybe create some sort of a valid behavior. So if I look at a JS file here, uh, usually there is something like a main or an app.js. Let's just do main. There's uh, nothing in here. Maybe there's an app, nothing in there. But let's just say it just says application goes here. This is a valid route for us to test out. So I want to see where we are in the context of this uh, download. So if I go into here, obviously I probably won't be able to do a, a ETC password. We can try that first. ETC password. Nope. We can do a bunch of different ad traversals. And it looks like that one doesn't work. What I do here is, and that's something that also Godfather, Orwa, and uh, HX007 mentioned, is they do the same thing. They try to see if you can include something in this specific path. If that does work, then we kind of know, hey, we are in this path right here under JS main. So we're under admin. That, uh, this is where the file is restricted to. So this parameter is only restricted to anything that's under uh, admin. So if I do something like download, if there's a source code for us, it may show it to us, it may not. So what we can do now is go back to our terminal. If you remember, we're going to do this one more time. There was another folder here, a couple of the files that we could have looked at in. I don't know if I want to wait. There we go. It found this web end for us and it's shown that we may have access to this as well. Uh, let's do that one more time. So web end, but the only problem here is it's not going to show us the contents of any files that are in there so what we can do here is we can launch something like chat gpt and ask it hey what are 
some common files under the webinf uh, folder in Java applications. We don't even have to put the Java application there, but it's a good thing to have. There's a web XML, there's an application context, faces, struts. I'm just going to start with this one. We're going to go back and we are going to see if we can access this web.xml. And it looks like it does load. It loads some file. And uh, I think maybe this is just, there we go. It looks like this. It's a it's an XML file that is giving us some other paths. It says, hey, under this web inf, under this folder and admin, we have download, which we knew about, but then we also have the incident report. So if we have an incident report and we hit it, it is going to probably show us something else, maybe a panel of some sort, but it looks like nothing showed up. So let's just go back and close this. We will go here again and we'll do this. And now it looks like it downloaded a file for us. We're going to quickly just open it up. It's in my downloads folder and it's called, it's called 2025. So I'm going to go to downloads and we're going to, it's actually a zip file. Let me unzip it really quickly. And if we unzip it, it looks like there's a file in here with the content admin space three. So it's, I think it's this one. There we go. And inside of this, there is a bit of some credentials in here. It's giving us some logs. It's saying, hey, there is uh, an administrator user. This is their name. This is their last name. There is a phone number that doesn't exist. And there's a password here. And there is some other values in here. There's two passwords for what it looks like. It says must change false, must change false. If we grab this and just put this into Google search, really quickly, we see an MD5 come back that says uh, we can crack it. And it looks like the converted md5 hashes password or sorry it's admin not password let's try this one as well let's see what this one is and that one is super pass one two three obviously we have created these fake passwords but in the original write-up they also have something similar in here we can use it to log in with these credentials and we can just type in admin and the password was super pass one two three that one didn't work it looks like so we can do admin and admin maybe that one didn't work let me go back and make sure we have it right super pass oh it is actually administrator that's why and there we go. We were able to log in to this panel. If you think about this right now, so far we have found a series of vulnerabilities. This is where the 40,000 is a little bit tricky because the $40,000 payout wasn't just for one. It was for multiple vulnerabilities that they found and each of them were actually designed to be paid because of the root cause of it. So the first one that we found was a local file rate that allowed us to actually be able to query any files that we wanted to. The second one that we found was getting access to the admin panel by pulling those credentials from the files in there and trying to doing like a dumpster dive is what I call it and looking for a needle in the haystack that allows us to log into this panel. So we have two bucks so far. The third thing I want to look for here is how do we escalate this access? Can we get RCE? Can we maybe leak some data? Something that's a lot bigger so we can say, hey, not only we have popped this admin panel, but within this admin panel, there's other vulnerabilities. Keep in mind though, some companies don't like it when you escalate this, but I've never had an issue where I've gone on admin access and then kind of found an easy bug. Maybe it's a follow up, maybe it's an SSRF, maybe it's an RC, whatever it is, and just showing them like, hey, you may just take this as an authentication authorization issue, but there is more server side value here that I can show you if somebody malicious gets access to it that can exploit and escalate this on their own. So let's just quickly go back and see if we can find something like that within this lab as well. So in the original report, they did say that something on this admin panel indicated that this is a Groovy script. So you can actually execute OS commands in Groovy script by just doing a print ID execute text and just sending that out. But the thing that was tricky here is that they realized that anytime they run a command, for example, if I type in ls-la here, or if I do something like a who am I, or let's just try a couple more commands, maybe some safe ones like a cat etc password, none of them were being shown to them at the end result. And it would keep saying uh, comp compilation succeeded and executed. None of the results were being shown. The thing that they realized later on was that they were actually able to see all this within the incident response link because this endpoint that we found earlier, this is incident report. It wasn't just a report. It was a combination of logs. So if you go and actually redownload this file and open it up, I'm going to show you really quickly. It looks like there is a bunch of logs files in here and you can see admin.xml was one of them. There's also a bunch of different ones. And if we do a cat and just open up all these logs, we can see that the bottom one obviously has this admin file that we found but then later you can see that the contents of all of our other scripts or other uh, commands that we ran like the 
uh, ETC password is in here. The who am I is in here. The LS is here, which is a massive, massive folder with all the other different logs. You just keep going and going and going. So every time you wanted to run a command, all you have to do was just go read down this incident report, get all the logs, open it up, and you see the results that you have had. So what we have done here is not only we found a local file read on the server, then we were able to take that local file read and just escalate it to find files that allows us to bypass the authentication. And once we were authenticated to this box or we were authenticated to this admin panel, we use the Groovy scripts to be able to execute commands and pretty much have control of the entire server, which is having outputs and things like that. So we've just found a massive number of different bugs, all of which should have been probably paid out in the eye or critical range. And by the end of the day, we're able to just combine all three of these and just get a massive payday. So big kudos to Godfather, Orwar, and HX007. I will link them right up down below. This hub is free. You can also look at it down below as well in the comment section. It'll be pinned. But I just want to quickly give a shout out to them for putting this out, allowing us to create this, but also just show this that how you can just take good reconnaissance, combine it with good web app hacking, and find vulnerabilities like this. So this kind of brought the whole entire recon and hacking full circle. Cool. so hopefully it gives you something to kind of understand how you can go and look for these vulnerabilities in the future all right that's it do me a favor if you haven't already hit that like button if you enjoyed this content please drop me a comment even if it's just to say hello and last but not least if you haven't already hit that subscribe button we're almost at 200,000 no homies so hit that become a no homie and i will see you all in next week's video peace